Empaka Mysteries by Sparrow. From part 11 to part 20. A dog growled and then ran howling away. Even a crowd of people turned around and ran in dismay. Susie wanted to save a strange looking creature pet. She had not a moment to fret. Moving so quickly, Susie ran. Her stomach felt butterflies, but it had to be done. Susie followed quickly toward a few mews and a squeak. She knew that the pet's future was bleak. Right under the spotlight, the green humanoids were all chewed, they began to dissolve as M. Paca threw them and spewed. Susie tapped her knee, and M. Paca emerged to get free. In a hurry, Susie and M. Paca ran towards Susie's house. Half the way, M. Paca sat on Susie's shoulder blouse. Susie opened the door, observing a vortex that covered a room. Now something else settled, it was a feeling of doom. M. Paca jumped in, and there was a thundering roar. Next, there was a spark that lifted to soar. Susie stood speechless as the vexing vortex shrunk. It was not a theory that she could debunk. There was the weekend, and Susie was cleaning, some things she had found were not hers and had no meaning. Susie threw away everything broken, and she stored things that were not hers and had no token. Susie wanted to know how and where Mpaka was, and all the questions danced like musical jazz. Mpaka turned her life upside down. Beforehand she lived her life with a constant frown. She wanted to know what was in that other world. Ideas hatched in her mind that were giant and bold. She waited for something extraordinary to happen, and wished for another vortex to open and flatten. All kinds of things happened at Susie's house. One time out of thin air, there popped a mouse. Another time, the vortex spewed a worm. A worm that could read minds and take any form. One day after work, Susie opened the door with glee. Thinking M. Paca is waiting for her in the vortex to flee. Unbeknownst to her, it was a worm in that form. Susie jumped right in, anticipating a thundering storm. Susie stepped right into the worm's trap, it was an instant attack in a snap. Now in the belly of the worm without form, she remained in a world beyond any norm. Susie was falling down and up all at once. There, it was dark and bright at a glance, a problem she tried solving, while observing the green humanoids that were slowly dissolving. In an instant, M. Paca felt something amiss, and it got compelled to travel into abyss. Passing the asteroids and many stars, it ended up at Susie's place, counting the jam jars. There also nested the worm, without a form, praying and waiting, echolocating, mind reading, and anticipating. Now at the speed of light, M. Paca explored many objects with great delight. There, the worm took a form of a jar, luring the creature into its unpredictable war. Suddenly, the world turned dark and cold. M. Paca knew the place was out of this world. Close by, it noticed Susie, its friend. It tried to come closer and extended its paw hand. M. Paca emitted an unbearable sound, and the worm regurgitated a few things it had found. Susie and M. Paca were back at Susie's place, the two were happy to see each other in any case. The formless worm felt its deficiencies, in this world, it hated its inefficiencies. Then a vortex opened and closed, and the worm had gone home as it got all exposed. M. Paca decided to stay with Susie for a while, it remembered the phone in a purse it had previously dialed. Susie showed M. Paca how things worked in her world, but that is another story that is yet untold. At times the vortex transports things, but at other times, no one knows what or whom it brings. The vortex from under the couch remains small, it disappears in the fall and reappears at a nearby mall. Please share, comment, like and subscribe.